So how do we begin a show like this in a time as unprecedented as this? Simple. But saying that the world is simply never going to be the same again. That's a fact. It's crazy when you think about where we are in the world right now. I am determined to do this show without using the newest buzzword right now. That's right. I'm going to try and get through my entire segment without saying social distancing or any derivative of the same. I'm also going to desperately try not to touch my face. Something that we've seen over the weeks has been very difficult. Really get an understanding of what... So let me give you some tips and answer some... And uh, recently you went out on the streets. Love the Italian people. I really do. Take away and around and around. Really isn't. Some people aren't taking it serious. Okay, a lot of us aren't taking it seriously. People are going on as if life is normal, and I'm thinking like, what will make you click? What will finally make you click? Is it a death? Is it like a, a big number, like ten thousand? Everything has changed. I want to start today's show by being as a bit serious in reiterating the fact that we must follow the advice of the World Health Organization. So before we begin, let's look at some of the most uh, coronavirus-related tips and tricks that social media has to offer. Now, let's get into our show. Social media has been lighting up with funny memes and gifs. I want to share some of my faves right here. Right, so we can all agree that Easter was a f- up. I mean, Jesus didn't rise from the dead for all of you sons of b- to moan about how you cannot go outside. And look, I understand it's difficult, but let's be honest uh, for those itching and b- rather and moaning about how f- up Easter is. Remember that your suffering is nothing compared to this man. Can we call him a man? Nailed to a cross, had to sit under a rock for a couple of months, and then resurrected because of your bullshit. Stay the f*** at home. In the long run, we'll all be a different breed of human beings. Let me tell you what I've learned so far. Uh, I've learned the following, okay? Number one, having time off is not necessarily a bad thing. Number two, reevaluating your life and the way you live is also a plus. And number three, gratitude is a must in a situation like this. I've also learned that Kenyans will find a way to party and party and party, no matter what. I mean, I wish I had thought of this myself, actually. There are young people who wanted to beat the curfew to go to a party, and guess what they got to go for the party with? An ambulance. That's how bad it gets. Now, think about it. There are very few essential services remaining right now. Healthcare workers being possibly the most important and paramount of the bunch, right? So, a group of Kenyans that used an ambulance to get to a party during the curfew. Uh, It's fucking genius when you think about it. I don't want to pat them on the back and to encourage this behavior, But in my partying days, I would have done just that. Okay, I would have thought about it, but probably not had the balls to actually go out and do it. Can we just pause and talk about this sexy motherfucker for a moment? Kenya's health CS Mutai Kagwe is being lauded for his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's amazing, actually. He took the job and literally, in the span of two weeks, this hit the fan. And he has had so much to do every single day. He's been lauded by a number of international publications and magazines, including the Wall Street Journal. In a publication dated the 4th, 5th of April, 2020, the Wall Street Journal singled out Kenya, uh, Kenya, rather South Korea and the United Kingdom for leading the way in managing the coronavirus pandemic. Now, Kagwe has been lauded for his efforts and in partnership with the Kenyan government, the private sector, non-governmental organizations, as well as Kenyans of goodwill. Sometimes it's important to highlight the work done that is actually helping us and not done by a bunch of fools in government. Now let's talk about those fools who are doing sweet f- all during this crisis or actually making things worse. As the government, see I touched my face, as the government is doing enough to help those most vulnerable, I'm not just talking about the old uh, peeps or those with asthma and diabetes, no. I'm talking about those who eke out a living day to day and live hand to mouth. Because I've been involved with an organization called Team Pankaj. Team Pankaj distribute food to take to Nairobi's informal settlements. And I have to be honest, the work they're doing is amazing. But since it and many other organizations are not recognized by 
by the Kenyan government, this man has decided to put a stop to it. It's this directive from the government banning all uncoordinated donations of food and non-food items to Kenyans during the coronavirus period by Interior CS Fred Matiangi that has caused an uproar. That's right, Kenya's Interior CS Fred Matiangi and indeed the Kenyan government as a whole has directed all donors and well-wishers to make their contributions during the coronavirus pandemic through the COVID-19 emergency fund. In a statement on Saturday, April the 11th, Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi banned uncoordinated food and other necessity distribution exercises throughout the country. Now, many of you may think this is noble, but let me take you back to this time in our country's very colorful and corrupt history. That's right, four years ago during the Olympics in Brazil, this happened. An impending prosecution of former National Olympic Committee of Kenya official Stephen Soy. Soy is said to be in police custody at the Muthaiga police station as investigation continues in what happened to money meant for the Kenyan team to the Rio Olympics in 2016 in Brazil. In up to 88 million shillings was embezzled by officials in charge of the Rio Olympics as Kenyan athletes languished in deplorable circumstances during the Games. You see, we don't have faith that donations or cash in kind will go missing. See, these greedy f**ks love to take and take and take until they end up looking like this. It's a problem and we need to be mindful. Think about it this way. And I hope someone from the government who can make decisions is actually watching this show right now. Yeah, you fatso. In the time that it has taken you to mobilize funds and food, how many people would have starved by right now? Think about it. Agree that there are positives in our government's response, but honestly, if enough was being done to cushion those who have literally nothing, then we wouldn't need these independent bodies trying to get the job of the government done. Now look, we're mad at the way Kenyans and indeed Africans are being treated in China after reports of the less than human approach to Africans who the Chinese assume are infected or are high risk of being infected. I have a place to go. I had to sleep outside. China, where there is no f doubt the virus originated, is now worried about another wave of the pandemic brought in by foreigners. And it happened. What the f That's crazy, right? And although we may never know the real story from China, because let's face it, all news is biased depending on where it comes from, but it's sad that we're now creating an almost xenophobic approach to these mother and the people we interact with and have been interacting with for years. But are we really any better? I mean, are Kenyans any better? Because you see, while Kenyans were angered after their counterparts in China were forced to sleep on the streets, well, others in Nairobi were facing the exact predicament from their own people. This is after 16 families were forced to sleep in the streets in Kayole after their landlord evicted them due to late payment of rent. 16 families in Nairobi's Kayole estate were forced to spend the night outside after their landlord evicted them for not paying rent. The families claim that they've been paying their rent on time but are now experiencing financial difficulties due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There are some landlords who have done the honorable thing by waiving rent and others who have given discounts on rent. <laughs> na wamenisaidia na nimefanya mambo mengi kutumia renti yao Nika, sasa nikaona wakati wa kushirikiana na wao na kusaidiana ni wakati huu waived the rent for the month of april for all tenants and requested them that that they stay at home as we are being advised by the government it is not an obligation so technically what the landlord in Kayoli did by evicting his tenants is not wrong it's a catch 22 really because rent is the landlord's sustenance. Look, it's a tough one, and the systems are simply not in place to cushion those who will feel the brunt of the coronavirus. So while you're sitting in your warm apartment or house, sipping a single malt or cheap vodka, whatever you prefer, remember, you can do your part. Just don't donate cash to the government's COVID-19 emergency fund, if you know what I mean, because you're giving this fat ass the freedom to get even fatter. And let's be honest, it's not a good look. By the way, what the has happened to this guy? I mean, hate him or love him, he gave us entertainment, and I, for one, miss seeing him in the news each and every single day. Is it because he threatened to stop reggae? Kenya sio nchi ya reggae. I reggae, na bali, na waganga, tutawakomesha Kenya hii. Our way. After all, we know how much this guy... And this guy love Sweet Island Beats from Jamaica. So, America's f***. 
The United States has become the first country in the world to record more than 2,000 deaths associated with coronavirus in a single day. More than 20,000 people there have died from the disease. America is racking up milestones that no other country would want to claim. The world's richest nation is now the world's most affected. The economy of the world's most powerful nation is now on its knees, causing this man to state that he wants to restart the economy. Are you talking to me? Trump said that it's the hardest decision he's ever had to make, besides turning his skin orange. Now, the US president suggested that he wanted to move soon, uh, but he also promised to listen to public health officials cautioning against relaxing restrictions prematurely. As he grapples simultaneously with the most devastating public health and economic crisis of a lifetime, President Trump finds himself pulled in opposite directions on what to do next. The bankers, corporate executives, and industrialists plead with him to reopen the country as soon as possible, while his medical experts beg for him to make sure that they're taking the right precautions against coronavirus. Thing is, it's not his decision to make. This has to go through so many layers to actually happen. America now is the hardest hit country when it comes to COVID-19. As of Sunday, the 12th of April, there was 1,780,440 cases, 108,834 deaths, and over 400,000 recoveries. And America's pissed, blaming the Chinese for this shit. And rightfully so, I suppose, but also lashing out at the WHO, and specifically WHO General Director Tedros Andenom. I can't even pronounce his last name, but I think he's Ethiopian. Damn, mother is throwing shade. Now, the question is, we're looking west at Italy, Spain, France, Germany, the UK, and of course the USA, and going, that's bad. I mean, we must be doing something, right? Right? No, wrong, because according to BBC reports, as of April 10th, Africa had passed the grim milestone of 10,000 reported cases of coronavirus, along with more than 500 deaths. According to the America's Center for Disease Control and Prevention, as the daily number of new infections appears to be uh, falling in parts of the world, some fear that the epicenter of the virus could move to the continent. This one, despite efforts to lock down cities and countries, despite donations of protective equipment and testing kits and ventilators from China. One thing is clear, Africa has not yet flattened the curve and the room for maneuvering is getting smaller and smaller. And here's the real kicker. As of the 10th of April, Nigeria and Kenya had each conducted around 5,000 tests for each country, which is a drop in the ocean when you look at the populations of both countries. Kenya, with a population of around 50 million, and Nigeria, Africa's most populous country, with a population of around 195 million. Do the math because I'm shit at math, but these are not good percentages. Now, compare that with the 600,000 tests in South, South Korea, a country with a population roughly the same as Kenya's at just over 50 million. You see the discrepancy I'm talking about? Announced Monday by this sexy mother the new cases are drawn from five counties. Mandera has four, Mombasa has three, Nairobi has two, Nakuru and Machakos each have one. Don't you see what's happening here? We're transmitting this thing thoroughly, indigenously. I just learned what that was, indigenous transmission of coronavirus. And that was on my radio show, thanks to a very smart virologist, because I would have never known what that was unless he told me. There is more to do, and certainly there will be more to come. I, for one, am doing my part by wearing my mask. I was gonna find it, but it's not on my desk, and staying the fuck away from people until further notice. So if you see me at the shops buying canned goods and toilet paper in bulk, say hi but from a comfortable social distance. I used it once in this show because I will definitely let you know when you get into my space, which has a diameter of two meters all around. Finally, in non-related corona news, though it feels like it could kind of be corona-related news, even though it's really not, crafty Kenyans are reversing M-Pesa transactions when they're leaving Matatus and leaving Matatu operators high and dry. I mean, take a bus, pay by M-Pesa, and then exit the bus, and then reverse the M-Pesa. My only question is, how did this not happen before? It's genius. Don't do it. Kids, parents, practice your social distancing. That's twice. Um, please wear your masks, sanitize, wash your hands, and just do the right thing. Mariam, over to you. Thank you, Farid. I am glad to be back in studio. And as is mandatory now, I am here to deliver your weekly dose of sunshiny news. And a disclaimer, I make no promises on not using buzzwords like Farid. I am all about the buzzwords and social distancing. Speaking of which, here's something that should go without saying, but apparently does need to be said. 
Hanging out with your friends, family, co-workers while wearing masks and gloves is not social distancing. Having house parties and drink ups, still not social distancing. Operating as if it is business as usual except for the curfew is not social distancing. I say this because ever since the president announced cessation of travel in and out of the Nairobi metropolitan area, Mombasa, Kilifi and Kwale, it seems people took this message to mean that they could go back to their regular outsiding as long as they did not break curfew or leave the aforementioned areas. But Corona is still real, still spreading and still a danger to us all. There is no invisible wall keeping the virus from operating in Nairobi, Mombasa, Kilifi and Kwale. The virus is also not nocturnal. It does not begin operations at 7 p.m. and then trot off to bed at 5 a.m. like a witch after a heavy evening of night running. Cabin fever is bound to kick in after a few weeks indoors, but the more we move, the more Corona moves. When I move, you move. And the longer we have to quarantine and to social distance. Millennials, I know we get a lot of flack for being the instant noodle version of a generation, but this is one case where delayed gratification is 100% the only way we get any form of gratification. So stay home. Now then, on to some strangely good news. Whether it's drug cartels building schools or piping water for entire villages in South America, or crime syndicates offering protection for area locals in informal settlements like in Kenya, organized criminal groups are the dons of giving with one hand and taking with the other. Just listen to Pablo Escobar's brother talk about how he built low-income housing for village residents who previously lived off of waste from city restaurants. Pablo tenía 30 años. El un día llegó a un sitio llamado El Basurero, que era donde botaban toda la basura de la ciudad. Y allá se dio cuenta de que mucha gente, había por ahí 200 o 300 familias que vivían en Tugurios, que eran unas casas de cartón. Eh, ese día llegó a la casa y llegó prácticamente llorando con las lágrimas que se le salían de sus ojos de ver la tristeza. Dijo, esto no puede ser así, yo voy a construir un barrio. Now, not much has changed in how criminal organizations react in times of crisis since Pablo's time. In a lot of places, folks will ask their resident drug lord for help before turning to the police or the government. And the mafia knows exactly that. In Italy's poorer southern regions of Campania, Sicily, and Puglia, the mafia is distributing food to the families hit hardest by the ramifications of the country's lockdown. They provide food or they may provide money because they have the liquidity. And so they provide this kind of aid, but not for nothing in exchange for recruitment into their criminal activity. A lot of the residents in these areas have not received any income in the months since the lockdown started. Now, obviously, police and the government are worried that the mafia could use this as an opportunity to build loyalty with the people and even recruit new members. But in times like this, the bottom line for many households is that there is food on the table. We would love to know what you think about criminal organizations transforming into Santa Claus in a time of crisis. So get in the comment section and let us know if the mafia's moves are a yes or a nay. Still in Italy, an unexpected consequence of everyone staying home and factories and other places of work staying closed is that the earth can finally breathe. I know you've been hearing that a lot lately. In Venice, for example, waterways were clear for the first time in decades. Residents can see fish and crabs in the water that was once murky and muddy. Environmentalists say that the main reason for this is the lack of boat cruises that would previously transport tourists around the Venice canals. It's not just Italy that is seeing notable changes in the environment. In India, for example, the Himalaya mountains are visible from New Delhi for the first time in 30 years because of a huge reduction in air pollution from factories. The quality of air has improved 44% compared to the same period last year in a city that had only two good days of good air quality since 2017. If you have a little bit of conspiracy blood in you, you may be inclined to say that the earth was just really tired of our sh** and needed a break from the constant pollution. So Mother Gaia said she's shutting down this whole joint until we learn to treat her right. While we do stand a queen who knows her worth, we do wish she found a more subtle way of letting us know that our carelessness was hurting her. Wait, haven't the ice caps been melting and the temperature rapidly increasing over the last few decades? <laughs> Closer to home, the name of the game is Adapt or Die, and Kenyan women are adapting. In Kitui, Governor Charity Ngilu is leading from the front by transforming a garment factory into an assembly line producing up to 30,000 masks a day. The governor began these efforts when she realized that waiting for imports from China or donations from billionaires like Jack Ma would take weeks. So the county government retrained 400 factory workers who were previously making uniforms, placemats, and napkins to efficiently produce 
20,000 masks a day. And not just masks, masks that meet industry standards for N95 respirators, like these bad boys. Amazingly, all of this was done in a week, and 80% of these factory workers are women with little formal education, yet they are here producing essential, life-saving protective equipment and selling it to the medical facilities all around the country that need it. Once again, proving that Superwoman doesn't look like this, she looks like this. Lastly, if you were born in Kenya, then you probably have a small scar on your left forearm from a vaccine that you received at birth. That small scar is from the BCG vaccine that protects newborns from TB, and it could prove to be a game changer in the fight against COVID-19. Research suggests that countries with widespread vaccinations for TB like Kenya, much of Africa and India have much lower rates of COVID-19 and death rates that are six times lower than other countries. This is because the vaccine has what scientists call an off-target effect, meaning that it offers protection or it improves your immunity towards diseases that were not really its target. The vaccine was invented in the 1900s and became widely popular, but mass vaccination rates started dropping in the US and Europe after TB just became less common. In the UK, for example, mass vaccinations for TB stopped in 2005. In much of Africa, however, mass BCG vaccinations are still an everyday thing. This could be one case where being left behind isn't the worst thing. Granted, a lot of the nations that still carry out mass BCG vaccinations do not have the capacity for mass COVID testing, so the low infection and the, death, and the death rates could simply be a case of what we don't know can't really hurt us. But if the vaccine truly is helpful in the fight against this disease, then that is great news for so many of us, especially the healthcare workers and the elderly who need every bit of protection that they can get. Researchers in the Netherlands have already recruited 4,000 healthcare workers for a six-month trial on the effects of the BCG vaccine. So fingers crossed. That's it for me today, but I leave you in the very capable hands of our correspondents, George and Justine, who are becoming quite the conspiracy theorists. Thank you, Mariam, and welcome to Banta Buddies. My name is George. I'm Justine. So on this segment, we'll be talking about news stories that Mariam and Farid might have skipped out on or just barely touched. Just bottom tier news. Yeah, basically an in-depth analysis that you, the viewer, did not ask for. So sit back, relax, you know, make sure your internet is working and skip that ad. So on today's episode, we are talking all things conspiracies. Justin, I know you're well-read, well-researched. Give me a couple of your favorite conspiracies way before even the COVID-19 pandemic hit. My favorite conspiracy theory has to be the moon landing. First of all, where was that camera? Hollywood. Yes. So, and then the second one has to be flat earthers. Like, the earth is flat, I believe it. Yeah, like when you open a bottle of cold earth, it doesn't go tss. Right? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? That is very true. With this coronavirus pandemic, like, what's your favorite conspiracy theory out there? Like, just anything to do with this coronavirus? Well, I've been doing a bit of research, and uh, the 5G one especially hit home. What is 5G? Oh, uh, so for our viewers, 5G stands for five gangsters, Ice Cube, Easy E. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding, in all seriousness. 5G is basically uh, just an evolution of 4G and 3G. It basically stands for the fifth generation of wireless communication technologies. So there are two schools of thoughts concerning 5G. Mm -hmm. The first one is that 5G causes the symptoms of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And the second one is that the signal from 5G systems might lower your immunity system, making you more susceptible to COVID-19 symptoms. I think I believe the second one. It's kind of, it's yeah, kind of yeah, true. And you're not the only one thinking this, because we've had even famous people on social media tweet unfounded claims based on 5G, the 5G conspiracy. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, Carrie Hilton. Exactly. Guess how many followers she has? How many? 4.5 million. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Guess how many people watched our last episode? So here's how the conspiracy started. Wuhan, the city in China, was one of the first cities to test out 5G. Yes. Wuhan, the city in China, was also the first place where the COVID-19 pandemic started. So conspiracy theories put two and two together and came up with the theory. Another, another thing that uh, bolts this claim is that when you map out the hotspots for the COVID-19 pandemic and also the places where they tested out 5G, they're the same places. So it's just triangulated like the Illuminati? Yeah, I mean, if you go looking for a conspiracy, you'll find it, right? 100%. Yeah. The 5G signal is not new at all. We've been using it in our Wi-Fi systems, in our microwaves. Do you have a microwave, Justin? Why are you putting me on the spot? Oh, sorry, this is off air. Just so you know, I don't have one, but continue. So bottom line, 
the, the strength of the signal is way too low to affect you health-wise, right? The only way you get affected by 5G is by swallowing the entire 5G mask and living with it for one year. Yeah, that looks like something people will do now. Cool. So what other conspiracy theories are out there that you've come across? The Bill Gates one. Okay. The idea is that once the vaccine for COVID-19 is released, mm -hmm. Bill Gates stands to benefit from that by selling out, by monetizing the vaccine. So I, I'm not far from believing this because Bill Gates is like a rich guy who, who like has philanthropy, work in poor people places. Like this kind of just sounds like something that's right along his path. Like why, why would it not be a conspiracy? I'll actually take it a step further. Mm -hmm. I actually think when they give us the vaccines, they'll have microchips, like nanochips inside those vaccines. And the chips will be loaded with like the latest version of Windows, like a trial version. And then after 14 days, you start experiencing like, you can't, your sense of taste has gone. You know, you have trouble breathing. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get back to health is by buying the Windows 36, I think, by that point. So it's like a 666, but for technology. For tech, yeah. Nice. So enough about my theories. How about you? I know you're well-read. Tell me some of yours. I read a lot, but I read the Bible. So I'm just going to talk about Christians. And Christians have a never-ending conspiracy about how everything we do is like a punishment for our sins. And coronavirus is no different. You know, when the locusts came, you remember, mm -hmm. like everyone was like, oh, like this is the first plague in like the Bible, and I'm sure Pharaoh was just looking at us like, are you guys serious? Like you're only on the second one. Christians should calm down, like they should just bring everything a notch Wait. lower. Justin, do you have anything against Christians? No, I don't. I just told you I believe everything I read, so I'm, ah. I'm actually a, a Christian, so don't cancel me here. And he just resurrected, so shout out to this guy. And also, Christians are blamed a lot for their shortfalls and their shortcomings and their so sexual deviance. Have you guys seen Quarantine Radio? Judge, do you watch Quarantine Radio? No. Yeah, so clearly this is the cause of why we're going to hell and why we have coronavirus right now. And I believe, I, I kind of believe this this to be true. Like, we shall be punished for us and so death is upon us, guys. Give us another one. Another conspiracy theory. Oh, this is like my favorite one. It kind of sounds real. China is manufacturing coronavirus as a bioweapon so that the entire world can bow to them or something. Sure. That's racist. Don't do that. So I, I, like when I found this theory, I was like, I wanted to read more about it. And so I found an article that said, our US Senator called uh, Tom Cotton, he said that he found this to be very true. But so when he was asked like, where did you get this information? Do you have any evidence to prove it? He was like, look, this is my common sense. And I was like, you can't do this, you know. Did he actually say that? Yeah, he actually said that and he had the audacity to say his common sense. My thing was like, look, Trump is the smartest person alive. If you're going to come for him, for his position, you kind of have to do better. You yeah. can't just be out here with like your common sense. You have to bring like two or three other people, you know, like Fox News. Sure, it actually reminds me of uh, like when you're arguing with a street guy. Mm -hmm. uh, when someone goes, you argue and you're at an impasse and someone goes, Bro, sinimi na kusho. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's you, but evidence, bro. You need evidence. If we're going to be doing common sense things, like, do you remember that conspiracy theory that we are both working on right now? Museven is immortal. Actually, I think I have a better way of phrasing that. I actually believe that the only way to live a long, healthy life is become, is become an African di dictator. Yeah. Look at the stats. Mugabe, how old was he? 192 years. Yes. Easy. Mm -hmm. Moi, our beloved Moi. That's the years he ruled. Yes. He was 95 when he passed on RIP. That is if we're sure that he was 95, he might be probably old. Another conspiracy theory. Yeah. And now look at Museveni. He dropped an actual home workout video just to prove to you guys that you don't have to go outside to exercise. I mean, what a show of preaching water and drinking it. What did you think of the home workout video? I, I just thought like those push-ups were really weird. It looked like he was sexing the floor. But like kudos to him, like he gave us that. So we have that burnt in our memories. Well, keep in mind he's 75 and he did 30 push-ups. I'm 28, I can't do 20 push-ups to save Farid's life. What the f***? That's crazy. No one can do 20 push-ups to save Farid's life. Like we're just being honest. F*** you! Yeah, but Museveni actually did give me an idea. Hear me out and tell me what you think of this. So instead of having presidential debates, how about we just have the candidates 
go up against each other and do like aptly named exercises like you know senator squats mm-hmm. dictator dips yes. recession rolls i think that will be okay that's like a good way like they get fit they eat our money but they have to stay fit for it so that's that's actually really good yeah and that's also really you don't want a president who promises to strengthen the economy but he has a weak core yes any more stories no i don't have any more conspiracy theories but i feel like If anyone out there still has a conspiracy theory they should like send it to us or like join the movement from 70 because we are really rooting for that one to work out. Or even if you have a conspiracy theory of your own that you haven't heard out there just hit the comments and let us know. So that was it from us Bantu Buddies. My name is George. I'm Justine. And uh, it's a massive thank you from all of us at Radio 54. See you next time.